Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Bobby, and I'm going to go ahead and ask forgiveness in advance. It's just now daylight. I hope the lighting is sufficient, but uh, uh, if uh, prior mornings are any indication, we should expect things to become more illuminated. As we go, I want to answer the question today that's been asked so many times in, in all different types of ways, Why? which boils down to this. Why can that puny little kid stand there and wallop drives all day long uh, that exceed the best I could produce in six months? In answering that question, uh, let me just tell you a little story. Before I came here, the last property where I was, uh, we had a launch monitor that we used to diddle around with in the shoulder seasons when we had more time. And we would let it uh, see what our swing speed was. You know, it tells you your angle of attack and your, your path and all these sort of things, but it also tells you your swing speed because that's most intriguing to people. And I would put it on a, on a tee and hit a normal golf shot and my swing speed averaged about 108 miles an hour. Uh, not particularly long, but okay. My friend David, the other young pro I worked with, his was 114. Now, we both knew that. That's what his swing speed, that's what mine was. We one time, just out of curiosity, we put a ball on a tee at this height. In other words, we put a shaft in the ground. We put a tee on top of that ball, and then a ball on top of the shaft that had a tee on it. And then we both swung from there. I was still 108 miles an hour, and he was still 114. So there was no difference whether the ball was sitting on the ground or up here for us. However, Every single time we brought a student in, particularly a higher handicap player, there was a discrepancy. There was a difference, there was a gap. And what I mean by that is the average man swung 89 down here when he was hitting a golf ball and 104 up here. Now think about that for a moment. David and I both swung the same here, the same here. He's, the, the average gap between someone's potential, which is what's represented by out here, and one's actual, which was down here, was usually about 15 miles per hour. And as the handicap got higher, so did the discrepancy between the two increase. The gap between the two increased. Now, what does that tell us? Well, in answering what that tells us, let me, let me show you something real quick. I've got two medicine ball, balls here. And here's what I'm gonna do. With two hands, I'm gonna try to throw these things as far down the line as I am. And I'm gonna use two different methods. Here's the first method. This method is where I just take my arm, there's the target. I take my arms away from the target and through to the target and see what that gives me. Straight line, right, but right, always staying in front of my toes and see how far I can throw that thing. Not bad, not bad. Now that's an eight pound medicine ball. I have a 12 pound medicine ball, which is 50% uh, heavier. So if anything, this should go less far, but I'm gonna use a different method. This time I'm gonna strap this thing into my core tilt and instead of going straight down, instead of going straight down the target line, I'm gonna allow it to wrap and then fire it by rotation of the body. And here we go. Don't hit my camera. Went roughly twice as far. Why is that? Well, that is the same reason why the average player can swing so much faster up here than here. Because the successful accomplishment of using the spine as an axis is easy here. You do it by default. Everybody in the world uses their spine as an axis. They're engaging uh, and utilizing centrifugal force, which is what? Force created by something moving away from a turning axis. That's simple when it's here. When the ball is here, the average person doesn't think as the, of their spine as an axis. Instead, they, they swing beside their axis. Why? Because they're trying so desperately to hit the ball straight that they can't even see the spine as something around which you turn. All they can think of is swinging up and down the target line. And that represents the difference, the gap between one's actual uh, and, and one's potential club head speed. And so, what's the lesson here? Well, it's not something I can just plot on a blackboard and say, here's how you do it, now go do it. If you've been swinging the other way for a while, it's, it's gonna be a little bit tough, but it's doable. I've gone through this and increased people's uh, club at speed lots and lots of times by just Im increasing the amount they use their spine as an axis. What's the first thing? You've gotta learn to stay steady. And that is, if I'm tilted over the golf ball 20 degrees from the outset, I need to still be tilted 20 degrees throughout the entire golf swing. That's not easy for a lot of people. Why? Because they're swinging this way and standing up during the swing uh, is a well-established habit that was required to swing on that more straight up and down swing that just doesn't produce anything. And so here's what I would say to you. Um, learn to hold your posture. Start with your spine square. Now there's some particulars that go with that. And if I can help you, uh, we can make a whole lot of progress in a short amount of time. But we start tilted, we remain tilted. This thing doesn't swing up above my ears. It goes underneath this shoulder and underneath this shoulder. And when I do that, I've maximized what my potential is for swinging this golf club. I know that will help you if only giving you the rough edges and a direction you should go if you know you're just not getting all the pop, you should. I wanna thank you for watching, and as always, if I can do anything for you, you let me know. Thanks a lot.